If you're making healthy adjustments to your lifestyle, alternating or changing cooking techniques can have a healthy and tasty effect on your food. Today, we are looking at the health benefits of grilling with a few tasty starter recipes of our own. Today, it is grill day on Food Journey and we're going to be cooking up some of your favorites entirely on the grill. Our menu starts off with tasty suya, a la Food Journey, smoky jollof, a fish for any season, bolly, my way, and a sweet dessert, pineapple with winter mint. Well, we're starting off today with some suya, homemade, the food journey style. You don't like suya? Well, you're going to love it after you see how we are going to make it today. But let's start off first with my preferred cut of meat. Beef shank, the rounds, neck and brisket are all tougher cuts of beef. They're more used as muscle and need more cooking. But this is beef fillet, sinews and all, and is a more pricey but very tender cut of beef. Less fat and is found in the middle lower back quarter, which does the least work. So I have a beautiful fillet of beef here and I've trimmed it down. And let me just show you one of the things that you've got to do is just to remove this sinew here. Because what it does is it stops you from uh, getting the flavoring and seasoning in where you want it to be. I'm not so fussed about the fat, everybody, because it's going on the grill and we all know fat means flavor. So what you want to do is just cut nice and slim with a sharp knife. Let's have a look at that thinness and slimness. Okay, like that. And put it to the side, cutting across the grain. So you're gonna take your time, painstakingly doing each piece. And I'm trying to get them longish the way suya is, so that we can mimic what we all know and love. With wooden skewers which have been soaked in water, thread the meat strips delicately onto them. This way they won't burn once they're on the grill. So that's all done there, ready to rock. Next thing of course is getting together these beautiful spices that we're going to rub in to our meat. Curry and garlic, paprika and vegetable seasoning locally sourced yaji and salt. These are my base. Give it a good extra mix. It's so important. There we are. And once I've got that top layer done, I'm literally going to pat it in with my fingers to get it to stick. Starting to look suya-ish, isn't it? I'm soaking up the satisfaction of doing this myself. And at the same time, I'm questioning why haven't I done so more often? I think it takes a few things. Motivation, definitely stomach desire, will, and then action. Okay, we've got a beautiful suya here, and come and have a look at those coals. You'll see they're nice and white. That's the way they're supposed to be. Because when you're cooking meat like this, you wanna make sure that you don't have anything that's just going to burn them. So they're going down now onto the grill. Oil side down, oil side down. Once you've placed them, oil the other side. Here we go, let's have a look. Mmm, lovely. This cut of meat is quick to cook, so don't overdo it. Really Wonderful. Okay. 
I'm satisfied with these. They're coming out really nicely. And then we can start looking at what our beautiful accompaniment is going to be. Yes, suya time. Almost suya time. And we're serving ours up with a classic trio of tomato, cabbage and onion. Who's hungry? And you can bet your bottom dollar I'm trying this. Look at that. Wonderful. See you, cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Onion. Mm-hmm. 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 We're taking on jollof rice today. Yes, the smoky kind. I'm excited about this one because I love the chance to infuse real smoky flavor using our grill. And when I say that, we're going to use vegetables that have been pre-smoky charred, and that's gonna bring all that beautiful flavor into the rice. You fancy that? Let's get started. We're going to have to do some washing of our vegetables because as I told you, they're going on the grill. So starting off with our tatashi, I love this. It's beautiful and robust and one of our main ingredients in jollof. Now you'll see that because they're twisty and turny like this, they get dirt caught up in all these areas in the market. So we're going to immerse them in soapy water, yes, and literally use a sponge on them. This is my vegetable sponge. It's soft, but has a little abrasion. So we're gonna get into all these little nooks and crannies. So now everything has been washed and in order to create that smoky, lovely taste that I want throughout the jollof rice, we're going to have to get that smoky taste in there somehow with our grill. And what I'm going to do is just skewer up some of these veggies, literally like that, so I can handle them on the grill, okay? So just popsicling them really so that they can be handled. How about this tomato like that? On the grill this is a short one actually how'd that get in there okay here we go we want a long one for the tomato so I can even put on two there we go look at that how fun Okay, let's put these on the grill. This is what we need for our jollof. Let's get that on first. And then I will be coming back with some extra veg for the pepper sauce. Wonderful. We're gonna give these a little bit of time to caramelize and grill up beautifully. So our vegetables have been on for a little while now and I'm very excited to see how they're turning out. Although we want a little bit of a char on them, we actually don't want them to com be completely burnt. Let's have a look. Oh ho ho, now you see, this is what we are looking for. We're looking for that beautiful caramelization and a softening of the flesh. There we go. Oh, look at that, fantastic. Let's have a look at our onion starting to go there. And our tomatoes definitely getting a blister on there. Beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous. Once all is collected, the peppers are cut open and split so they can be deseeded. I'm using my handy asanka to grind this the traditional way, adding everything until they're blended through. It's a true labor of love. Okay, we've done our flavor base, and let's have a look at some of the herbs I'm putting in. Definitely. Got some lovely parsley here, and I'm going for some rosemary or rosemary 
and some ginger and also my favorite stock cube some miru and some onions and here's the lineup and our choice for rice is pre-washed and soaked basmati it's curry garlic and vegetable seasoning that we're adding to the sauteing onion mixture the most important elements in this whole recipe is the tomato paste and we have to cook that out let's add some water so that everything doesn't burn i put a little salt in there and i'm now going to add our beautiful blended mix to this some water. So, time to have a look at that. Wonderful. We're happy about what's going on here. Nice and thick and potent and peppery smelling. And we've got these beautiful herbs to add in. The ginger, the rosemary, and the parsley. And now add the rice with a little more water and bring to the boil. Let's have a look. Right, now, at this point, it's good to give it a stir and turn it right down. Before I do so, I'm going to make sure that I put on a bit of a cartouche or covering so that we don't allow any of that steam to get out. This will do. And cover that back up. Nice and tight. And low flame. The pepper sauce is so easy. We've already roasted off these lovely vegetables. So all there is to it now is just adding a tiny little bit of salt for flavor and then getting in there and labor of loving it, getting it nice and pulverized and smooth. What I love about this sauce is really the fact that it just tastes creamy and delicious and seems to go with everything. Mm -hmm. and will be perfect for our grilled fish, which is next on our delicious menu. One thing I love about grilling a fish is the effect that that grilling has on it, that beautiful char, and also being able to put your own flavor base into that fish to make it entirely yours. And we're going to do that today. I'll be using a small snapper today, and let's start by preparing this little lucky guy for our grill. Time to make the beautiful fish. And when I talked about infusing our own flavors, I've made a choice here, and my choice includes garlic, ginger, basil leaves, and parsley. And to make it a little bit easier to pound, I'm just really gonna cut that into three pieces and then add in this lovely garlic. Everything's nicer with garlic, isn't it? One beautiful clove. I'll stop for a moment just to add a little bit of salt to that. Very good. And pound away. I'm throwing in one pepper for good measure. You can never have enough heat. And we're keeping this all green with the basil leaves and with the parsley too. Just scraping that off, you can see we have this lovely green rich mixture into which I'm adding a little bit of oil to loosen it up. See? And this is also going to moisturize the fish and allow us to spread this the way we want to. So let's grab this fish with clean hands, of course. 
I like to feel what I'm doing in the kitchen sometimes. So hands are clean. This fish has been gutted and its gills removed as well. Reason being, it's oh so nice to be able to have so many cavities in which to put this rich and beautiful seasoning. So what are we doing? Making sure that we don't have scales. If you feel any, get rid of them. I just flick some off and then we're gonna go for the slash. I love the slash because it allows us to get that seasoning way into the fish. So let's start inside out. In here first, just with a spoon, getting it into all the orifices, even down there. Okay, and then we'll open up our head and we'll put some in here too, because you know we like our head in Africa. We don't play with that. Embed it and spread it. Hey, that rhymes. Embed and spread. Okay, let's get our fish on the fire. A little bit of this oil just dabbed on the fish a bit. It's gonna fall off really while we're cooking, but we just don't want to risk it. So I'm gonna literally just grab it by its tail, whack it on the fire, just like that. Paint the other side so it's ready when I am. Lovely. Okay, cook away fishy. Cook away. Okay, I think we can flip our fish. Oh, and look at that. Just how we want it to be. All the hype about grilling is real. It's healthier, extremely tasty, and a really fun communal activity that you're sure to get hooked on. And if you're comparing calories, grilling is really the lower calorie option for most whole foods. And it's easier for your body to process as well. Okay. I can only remember eating jollof rice with really beautifully fried plantain. And when I say fried, I, I don't mean air fried. I mean the type where it was fried in half vegetable oil and palm oil, the real kind. But with good conscience, I cannot really serve that up today on our healthy tip. So we're going to be grilling some. And believe me, with what we're going to do to it, it's going to taste just as sweet and succulent as the first type I remember. And here we go. Just slicing down the side there because it's so much easier to just open this up lovingly and then cut into beautiful rounds like so. Clean hands, yes, doing our thing. So you see, open-faced like so. We managed to get on five of these beauties on each stick. Isn't that lovely? So you've got all that surface area for the spice. So we'll lay that here. And what are we actually going to be doing to these? I'll show you quickly before I finish the others. Remember the lovely seasoning that we had left over from our suya? We're just going to dust a little bit of this over the bowl don't have to have every single bit of it covered, but basically making sure that we have a dusting, which is really gonna enhance the flavor of this body. Very handsome indeed. Brush delicately with some favorite oil before putting it all on the grill. And in three minutes, they are beautifully caramelized and as ready as our very yummy looking fish. Let's have a look at our beautiful rice. Let's see where we stand. Oh yes. Basmati smoky jollof is ready. Time for us to serve this on our platter. This is making me hungry. How about you?
Bon Appetit. Really flying the music. Okay. For dessert, it's making a grilled pineapple treat with a winter mint dusting to kick it up a notch. Because we're using herb mint, it's important for us to wash it. And you can see, if you look carefully, all those little bits floating around. So I like to just lift the mint, isolate it in a way, and then pour off everything else and go again. You can see we have less of that sediment now. There, yeah. and more mint. One more. Because the thing you don't want, obviously, is bits in your mouth. Good. So that's it. Now we can just go pick off the leaves. Beautiful pineapple here. Just going to break off the top like so and start cutting. Top off, tail off. Save these because you can always squeeze the juice into a glass and have it. So the idea is we want to make sure we're going beyond these harder bits. So slice down like that. So you can see we've gone beyond there. And the same thing. As I say, if you think you're wasting some pineapple, you actually aren't because all this is squeezable into a glass, even these bits for juice. So I don't even get too afraid when I see I've gone a little bit beyond. So carving all the way around this. So we have one beautiful piece of fruit in the middle, which we can now slice and skewer. Tiny last bit here, beyond those eyes. And there we go. All right? First part done. Slice this down the middle and leaving in the core like that just four big slabs and then we're going to be able to push our skewers through them we're making grilled pineapple popsicles really and i imagine anyone who loves pineapple will be a little curious okay. once we've tried the mint Select all the perfect leaves you need for your desired intensity. And with a cleaver, I'm just bunching it up and giving it a very good chopping. And of course, that's going to release all the mintiness. And here's the wintry part. Don't ask me why. It just looks like it. And finally, a sweet concentrated result. Something new and different for your ever widening palate. So here's an end to our tale and hopefully a beginning of a grilling adventure for you and your family. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Food Journey has a new Instagram. It's F O O D J E R N Y at Food Journey. So if you were following us before, please come and follow us here now.